Thank you very much, everybody, for uh, for joining us today. My name is Dan Weinberger. I'm the CEO and co-founder of Morpheus Network. Uh, of course, I've been with ISCEA for a few years as well. Uh, I'm also a United Nations supply chain expert, and I teach a masterclass on paperless trade for the United Nations. Uh, today, I'm, I'm going to talk about supply chain middleware and the need for data portability. So the number one problem in the world to solve or to stimulate economic growth still supply chain barriers. Uh, this is a comment from the World Bank, a $2 trillion option back, a $2 trillion problem about five years ago. Now it is a much larger problem. We've actually seen this uh, in the real world based on the uh, you know, resiliency that we haven't seen based on COVID, uh, geopolitical disruptions, uh, the ukraine Russia war, uh, you know, being able to procure things uh, you know, from a proximal level as well as being so important to reduce carbon footprints as well. About um, 40 points of handling down the average supply chain. Uh, so let's see how this you know, sort of fits in the real world and the problems that control businesses are having. Uh, so disconnected systems down the supply chain. We're talking about IT systems that don't speak to each other. Uh, different ERP systems, whether you have a TMS that doesn't you know, connect to your ERP, how do you connect those data points together, right? Uh, communication gaps between stakeholders. These are people down the supply chain, from customs brokers to freight forward to shipping companies to buyers and sellers. All these different people have to communicate with each other. When you have these communication gaps, you have a lot of issues in your supply chain as well. Uh, there's inflexible soft software architecture, I'm not like add in software, you know, IT systems to your current stack. A lot of manual uh, processes which cause errors all the way down the supply chain. We'll talk a little bit more about that as well. Um, result is scattered information all the way down the supply chain, lack of visibility, and you can't manage your customers' demands based on all these weak links that can happen in any supply chain. Uh, so hammering home, uh, what exactly is happening on the ground level? We have supply chain managers. Uh, they're trying to run their supply chain, run the logistics for their company. Uh, over 70% of them are still using Excel. So we're talking about copying and pasting out of a spreadsheet. 80% of those companies have manual errors when it comes to you know, manual entry into a document, right? Uh, on average, it takes about one hour for four documents to be created. This is set up a single shipment that requires four documents, something like a, a BOL, perform an invoice, an EPA, certificate of origin. Setting up those documents takes about 15 minutes per, some of an hour on average that companies are seeing. What we see is a ton of paperwork, a ton of errors, a ton of delays, a ton of disruptions, and justice from the manual processes within the supply chain. What do we see the global impact? Why, why does that matter, right? Do we care so much if businesses make more money and ship things faster? Obviously we do if you're running a business, right? Number one, uh, but number two, the result is 90% uh, of all businesses, uh, carbon emissions are in their supply chain. That means if we shut down the supply chain inefficiencies, we're cutting down a huge percentage of carbon emissions that are out there in the world. This is the number one problem to solve when it comes to carbon emissions is supply chains of businesses. On top of that, we can ask a business to clean up their, you know, their entire structure, be as optimal as possible, but 80% of those emissions are not in direct control. Those are scope two and three. They're in their value chain, where they're getting their products from, where they're getting their products to. Nothing to do with what they're doing specifically. So it really takes a lot of technology or to trace, trace all that activity, all that carbon emission that's happening, and how we can clean that up and uh, really fix the world, basically. So what is the solution? David talked about this. Uh, he mentioned dynamic, actionable data. In all stakeholders and all IT systems. We have the data out there in the world. It's going to take advantage of, create a ton of automation, uh, based on automation, optimize supply chains. We embrace the data we have. We don't have to replace it. Let's look at how this you know, sort of fits together and how a solution would work. We're going to talk about high level, then we're going to go into some specific use cases. So uh, what we do with Morpheus, that is what we are specifically, is a middleware where the binding glue for the fragmented data in supply chain, as well as fragmented stakeholders all the way down the supply chain as well. Uh, this image over here shows that we're pulling in data from any cloud platform, whether it's Google, uh, Microsoft, or, or Amazon, uh, pulling in data from, you know, pay, to send out data to payments, creating compliance documents, QR code scans for handling points, whatever's needed down the supply chain. I'm gonna show you how we build that into our drag and drop platform as well, very, very simply. Whatever's needed in that supply chain, you pull in through our over 150 relevant supply chain integrations, allowing a ton of automation to happen. You're just pulling in the data that you already have. Once again, that is the middleware positioning. That is quite a differentiator in telling the company to rip out what they're doing and implement new automated systems. How does that look uh, for companies themselves that are using it? Once again, we have all those uh, integrations, you know, over 150 that we have. Other companies have a ton of integrations as well. Uh, we have an automated workflow engine, so you can orchestrate your supply chain based on what needs to happen. And on the other end, for the users themselves, whether that's the you know, raw material uh, you know, provider, like a farmer or a miner, they have to put in the information to, into the UX as well, that, that user interface. 
Uh, we have a very intuitive, easy to use user interface. And I'll get into the different types of users that use the interface as well. But once again, we don't want to make it over complicated for someone, let's say, like a raw material provider to just give their handling point and, and say there's their certificate that needs to be handed in for the supply chain. We don't want to make it complex and use a whole workflow builder to add more of the supply chain admin. Let's go into the real world and talk about a you know, company that everyone's heard of uh, and the supply chain problem they were having. Uh, Coca-Cola, a lack of traceability in their supply chain. Uh, this is where their non-sparkling beverage uh, part of their company. They're actually getting data from over 20 ERPs all around the world, from 30 countries around the world. Uh, 34 different bottlers handling this product, uh, over six supply points. Uh, as you see here, 25 manual documents were set up. Every single shipment they were, they were putting out there. The confidence of supply chain was completely broken. Uh, they didn't know when their manual documents were coming in. They didn't know where the data was coming from. A lot of issues all the way down the supply chain, all because of lack of traceability. So what was the solution that was implemented? A traceability solution. Purchase order manager. So we're pulling in the data from SAP. We're going to pull in the data right from the purchase order. No matter what bottle are sending in that information, uh, we have the automated document exchange. Then the documents are created automatically. Those logistical documents, those of lading, uh, customs documents as well. And then we have the full supply chain track and trace. Uh, we have all the documents when they're handed in based on the system doing it in an automated fashion. We have all the responsible parties submitting the data as needed, as well as the physical asset data as well. Where is Where are the products? When they're delivered? Uh, when was the filing happen so we can actually ship the products off? All this was brought together. And the result was amazing results. They were able to double their export volume with the same exact team they were using and reduce their overage costs by 50%. Uh, really fantastic results for Coca-Cola. Uh, and how does this work? We go right back to that you know, middleware positioning, uh, using those integrations itself, and then allowing Coca-Cola to pull in that data from those purchase orders, create the automated workflow based on the customs docs required. And then the UI on the other end, extremely simple. The users just have to drag and drop as necessary and watch all those activities coming through, their handling points, the filing of the documents, and making sure everything's happening smoothly with the dashboard. Moving on to another live implementation. Uh, this is our middleware implementation with Federated Co-op, uh, FCL being the third largest food distributor in Canada. Uh, we have a complete automated food certificate system for them. They have hundreds of vendors uh, all around North America and actually into Europe and South America as well. They all have to supply their food certificate documents. Completely a uh, manual process before of an army of FCL people requesting documents, receiving emails, letting the vendors know the documents were received, uh, you know, manually checking out expiry dates, uh, checking database systems to make sure the documents are still valid. We've all built this into their entire system of a complete automated system now based on the data the vendors are providing. FCL can still watch exactly what's happening. They see when the documents are provided. They can see when documents expire, if a, if a certificate is no longer valid. They have all of that on their dashboard. But once again, there's no, no longer an army of people doing that. The army of people is now doing other amazing tasks. Right now, it's all automated through a software system based on middleware, pulling in data from all these different sources from all the different vendors. Another amazing implementation that we have uh, is with Marsh Insurance. This is the world's largest uh, insurance broker as well. Uh, once again, thinking of that middleware positioning and data coming in from all the different you know, IT systems and stakeholders, um, we have insurance that's required for a specific shipment. Let's say a truckload that's going from Canada to the US and you want to add on extra insurance. You've already provided all the data required for the shipment to create those documents, create the commercial invoices. All that data has been provided. I'm going to convert that data into the March system as well. So you have one click, say, yes, I want extra insurance on this load based on the value of the load. All the data is already in the system. Hold it through the middleware, creating a great level of interoperability through that middleware to be able to generate these automated one-click insurance certificates. Now a company doesn't have to contact the insurance company. They don't have to re resubmit to them all their, their information about where the shipment's coming from and going to, uh, value of the goods. They don't have to resubmit any of that. Nothing's re-keyed. No, no reaching out. It's all built in through the middleware based on the data that's already within the supply chain. Again, creating dynamic data based on what we have, embracing it, not replacing it. Another great implementation as well, you know, this is really showing how, how the world is moving in the right direction when it comes to these automated systems. Uh, we've seen, you know, obviously Marsh Insurance with all their different clients using that one-click insurance system, uh, automated food certificates with FCL. FCL has a ton of other systems they're automating as well based on the vendor data. Uh, obviously, Coca-Cola with your traceability system as well. And then we get into actual port operation. This is for Gulf Tainer, uh, another amazing client of ours. Uh, their head office is based in Dubai. 
You're going to see the world's largest privately held port operator. Uh, they control ports in Dubai as well as the United States as well. A really amazing company. And what we created for them, again, was a system that was completely manual. Uh, it's such a huge problem down at the Long Beach and LA ports was the, the ships, the container ships coming in, knowing the data that's on those container ships within the terminal operating system, going to transmit that data directly to the TMS, the transport management system. Instead of having trucks trying to figure out which loads they're picking up and where to deliver those containers and dispatchers, you know, having to manually call the trucks and say, oh, I have three containers. I need three trucks to deliver different places. Instead, what we have is a completely automated system connecting those data points together through that middleware interoperability layer. We had to take in the data from the terminal operating system, connect the trucks that are available in the TMS, and that actually orchestrate in a completely automated fashion to unload those container ships, load up the trucks, and deliver to the final destination completely smoothly. Uh, amazing implementation again. It's a complete API, API hub for port operation. In my opinion, it's a great example of leveraging middleware to make data dynamic. Another great uh, solution we created, actually, this was more uh, focused on uh, small, medium enterprises. Uh, I didn't see a lot of our solutions for Coca-Cola and FCL. These are these are large enterprise solutions. Um, what we created, uh, this was built along with Google, uh, was actually a 30 second or less shipment setup. This is when you have your contacts already built into Google. If you're leveraging, let's say, Gmail, Google Drive, Google Contacts, we're actually implemented a Morpheus system within the Google Cloud platform allowing you to log into our system with single sign-on, so you don't even have to log in if you're to log into Gmail. Uh, and then you pull in your contacts right through Google Contacts. Again, you don't have to rekey anything. You're pulling those contacts right in, and we're able to generate DOLs, perform, a, perform a invoices, uh, even create EPAs for you. Uh, we can connect uh, insurance systems to March Insurance as well. Once again, orchestrating a shipment in 30 seconds or less with all that data. Think back to that earlier slide of 70% of companies copying and pasting out of Excel. Thinking back to those 80% of those companies making manual errors with that copy paste, this completely eliminates that. And within 30 seconds, you're actually setting up, setting up your first shipment. Shipment, very very exciting stuff. And we're obviously proud to work with Google and now another one of our great partners. Moving on, I want to show you uh, specifically the digitalization showcase. How is this completed? Right, we can talk about these great solutions and show you, you know, a slide that has three stages to it. But to touch and feel. How do we actually take advantage of these technologies and see them in place? What are companies actually doing? This here is our drag and drop workflow builder. Uh, we're very excited about this. There, there's different ways to access different modules, different technologies the companies are doing. We love using this drag and drop builder. Reason being is that you can access all the available modules we have on the right hand side over here. And what is required for the supply chain if you're doing a customs release? Uh, if you're going to do a, a specific IoT shipment that you want to you know, track the geofence of and trigger something based on arrival, you can pull in these modules as required and drag and drop them as required as well to synchronize uh, based on what's required for the supply chain to happen properly. So we built this in for other companies making specific modules for them. If they had a specific functionality they required, we could build custom modules. Uh, we have a whole SDK for this as well. So other companies, other consultants, other software implementation companies can come in and build their own module for their prospects as well to be able to create more functionality within our middleware. It really, really leaves it you know, basically infinite, the possibilities. Of course, already is infinite with the different combinations that we can, we can put into our system with already over 150 integrations that we have. So this drag and drop builder makes it very easy for a supply chain manager to set up any supply chain and automate that what they need to do by pulling in data from different systems. And then what we have the result is a digital footprint uh, for every single shipment that we send out, uh, every shipment that goes through our platform, we record every single one of those transactions, whether it's handling point, the submission of a document, uh, you know, if someone sends a payment, uh, you know, if there's something that happens with the IoT device, some sort of trigger that's happened, some sort of sensor goes off, temperature, humidity. I'll show you some IoT devices afterwards as well. It all gets recorded, recorded on this immutable digital footprint. Uh, and why is it immutable? It's immutable because it's recorded on blockchain. Once something's written to a blockchain, it can never be changed, can never be manipulated, obviously. You can always go back to this digital footprint and see exactly what occurred. Uh, when we're creating this amazing digital twin on chain, everyone can all the stakeholders, we're talking about 40 different potential stakeholders in the supply chain, they all can view that same digital twin, that exact same digital footprint, uh, and then use that data in the future uh, in order to optimize with machine learning and artificial intelligence, learn from the past. How do we build up that digital footprint? Uh, it occurs through all these different you know, occurrences in the supply chain, whether it's different IoT devices that are sending readings back into the system, uh, whether it's handling points, you know, trucks being loaded, images of the trucks being loaded as well. 
whether it's certificates being added, a document being submitted, uh, whether it's you know customs clearance as well. You know, we're going over the border. You want to know all those you know various data points, whether it's a PAX number, a CARS number, whatever it would be based on the crossing. We include that in the digital footprint. You can always pull up all that data in the future, see exactly what happened for that crossing, exactly what happened for that loading point, exactly what happened with those IoT readings as well. Uh, and then, you know, for example, Marsh Insurance, if they're using a, if there's an insurance claim, you have all that data from the blockchain as well that you can refer to and know that it's the valid, you know, single point of origin truth, basically, of data. Uh, really, really exciting stuff with digital footprint, which we create again every single transaction to the platform. Going back to how we're pulling in this data, right? We, we mentioned obviously, uh, you know, having different systems, different integrations with, you know, insurance and so on. IoT devices, extremely exciting. The advancements they're making in IoT devices. We are a middleware, obviously, and so we're pulling in data from all these different sources of, of, you know, all the different sensors that are out there. As IoT companies develop more amazing systems, more amazing sensors, that just increases the functionality of our platform as well. We love that. Uh, so we, we are partners with a ton of different IT providers, the leaders in the world, uh, from Telefonica to Hanha, uh, Geotab, which is the world leader in, te in telematics as well, that's specifically tracking trucks, uh, devices on the trucks themselves. Uh, this is an IOTEX unit as well, Pebble, another one of our partners. Uh, love working with these different IoT companies. Uh, and then again, once, you know, once they're putting in those sensors and they're able to show their clients what those readings are coming in for, we actually take those readings and make them dynamic as well. Uh, to give you an idea of that, uh, I'll have a, a brief, a uh, little short uh, GIF or GIF video over here. Uh, this is setting up a geofence. Uh, geofences are extremely exciting, reason being that you can physically follow around your goods, and then when they enter a specific zone, in this case it's Monterey, Mexico, uh, let's say that's the final delivery point, when they enter that zone, you can send you know, a whole bunch of different things going out. You can send notification to your receiver, your shipment's about to be delivered, you can send out a final payment, uh, you can send a whole bunch of information across your company, knowing where that where those physical goods are, and then creating a, a dynamic, actionable point of that geofence. Extremely exciting, and again, through our platform, we make it extremely easy to settle and leverage not only IoT devices, but also leverage uh, geofences as well with those devices. And looking at one of our partners here, Hanha, uh, you know, we have a ton of different partners. Again, uh, really depends on what you're looking to trace uh, within your supply chain, where you're looking to track, what sensors are required. Uh, with Hanha, they have an amazing parcel life device. It can be used in over 40 airlines, uh, primarily in a small package, of course. Uh, you see it's got temperature readings and humidity readings. Uh, even has light detection as well. Uh, if someone opens up your box and light hits the box, you know specifically you get a notification. Someone opened your box. And you can check the geolocation. Oh, it was opened in this warehouse, in this facility, right? So a lot of information can be built up about these notifications from these IoT devices. Uh, they also have an amazing device for containers. Uh, we do a lot of you know, containerized shipping as well, uh, connected obviously to Golf Tainer and that, that private port operator. Uh, and again, on the outside of the container, being able to track the geolocation, uh, even light detection, temperature, humidity, all these things are required you know, for a company based on needing a cold chain to, you know, a system in place. Uh, or needing you know, risk high value goods to be geolocated. Very important, and having these specific IoT devices, partners of ours, uh, make it a lot easier to do, of course. And basically what we look to create at the end, uh, we don't you know, look to tell a client, hey, we have a great connection with IoT devices and we can build a geofence for you. No, 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 that's not what we're looking to do. We're looking to create these full end-to-end -end solutions that work for our clients. Uh, to give you an example, we built this amazing anti-counterfeiting brand protection solution with SAP. It's actually available in the SAP store right now. Uh, it's certified by SAP as well. Uh, we're actually pulling in data for any supply chain and making sure all those handling points are occurring at the right place. Uh, basically, if you have a high value good, you want to make sure it's not being sold at some flea market or being copied and being resold. We're able to trace those items all the way down the supply chain and make sure they're being handled by the right parties. And of course, recording all these handling points, all those occurrences down the supply chain on the blockchain as well, to make sure that all that data is valid and all the stakeholders down the supply chain can always refer back to that data as well. Again, connecting all these different data points down the supply chain, end to end from the raw material all the way down to the consumer end and make sure all those data points come together within the digital footprint so you can follow along all your products.